Now here we are at part four of this seven part series on HP tuning, what does it actually change in the 6L80. And in this one, we're gonna look at the upshift XYZ patterns, adaptive oncoming and adaptive offgoing. On this slide, it's like a table of contents for the videos that are in the series. Part one was an intro and I covered the stuff that you needed to know to understand all these other videos. Things like pressure regulation and AFL pressure and uh, the different internal parts and the clutches and so forth. And then part two was baseline observations, just things that we noticed when we did the baseline test, what was unique, what were some things that were interesting to point out. Part three is the max pressure, max pressure B, max clutch and max line. I went through and changed those and we viewed whether or not the pressures actually changed like you would probably think they would. And in part four, I went through XYZ, adaptive oncoming and adaptive offgoing. We changed those calibrations and tried to see what kind of pressure changes actually happen in the transmission. Part five is torque adder, transition time, desired output torque factor. Part six deals with the torque converter clutch. We got all these different things like the apply ramp and the pressures, regulator gains and offsets for the torque converter. And part seven is the adaptive oncoming volume preset and then results from a commercially available tune and we'll kind of look to see how those pressures change based off of their settings. So the first modification that we're doing in this video is we're modifying XYZ 30%. So I'm taking all these tables under XYZ and all these different options, and I'm raising it 30%. So I highlight the table, and then I put 1.3 in there and multiply the table by 1.3, that raises everything 30%. And XYZ is gonna represent different types of shift patterns and you can see the selections that I've got. Well, they're all selecting X, so they're all using the same. I went ahead and changed all of them anyway because I figured, uh, why not? The way HP Tuners explains what's actually happening, if you read down there, it says base shift pressure, 2-4, that was the example on, for pattern Z, so uh, the 2-4, that's the one I was hovering over. This is the base line pressure, main line feed pressure solenoid during a shift kind of gives you an idea that it's going to control the line pressure during the shift. Now, things that are kind of misleading or confusing is the solenoids are operating between 0 and 110 or 130 PSI because they're fed with AFL pressure. And you can see by these values here, these are the stock values, that they're going way above that. So this must be the actual pressure that's being controlled by the regulator valves for the clutches or a pressure regulator valve for the uh, line pressure. So. Likely, when you modify this, if you were to assume that you're going to actually end up changing the actual pressures uh, at the clutches, if you will. And the way they all end up doing that is by manipulating the duty cycle of the solenoid. So we'll see by raising these commanded pressures, if you will, if we actually get the net result. So here are the results, and the results are significant. There were some changes that occurred. You can see here I've got the baseline file with the baseline pressures. I kind of summarized all the different pressures, so that way we don't have to look at individual slides. And you can view these individually, like I said, if you download the PDF and you just kind of read through it. And this is the modified. And you can take a look, I've got like 255 PSI on the one, two, three, four clutch. And then the two, six clutch really didn't change that much. Let's say 170. And then my three, five R went up to 242. And my four, five, six went up to 188. Comparing that to the baseline, we went from 212 to 255, 168 to 170. That really didn't change that much. Only went up a couple of PSI. Uh, 197, it went up to 242 from uh, 197. And 153 on our baseline for our 456 and 188 on our modified. So you could see the pressures went up. And those were the pressures that occur after the shift is completed. So then you're wondering, okay, what are the pressures like during the shift? So if we were comparing, like, you know, here's our one, two shift. We went from 18 PSI to 43. That's when the shift occurred. And then right when it's done, it jumps up to 170. Same thing kind of holds true here for the 3.5R, 37 to 44. That's that shift phase. And then it jumps up to a, a holding pressure, 46 to 52. So these are all the pressures after the modification was done, the actual shifting pressures, if you will. Now, if we compare that over here to our baseline, actually not any different. 19 to 44 versus 18 to 43. 
33 to 41, 38 to 41 versus 37 to 44. Slight change there. Uh, then 41 to 52, uh, 46 to 52. So the starting point was a little bit lower, but there weren't really that many significant changes for the shifting portions, but quite a bit for the when the shift is complete and you're just holding it with pressure. So it did change things. It changed the overall pressure. It changed the pressure that the clutches are going to receive while you're in that gear, but it's not really changing your shifting pressure so much. At wide open throttle, more of the same thing. Uh, we're gonna see like, here's our baseline. So we've got 217, 168, 188. And we went from 251, 170, 226. I didn't get the 3.4 and all that stuff because I can't go that fast. At least I don't want to go that fast with the truck I've got. I don't want tires blow up or anything like that. It's an older truck. Uh, it's a low mileage truck, but it has original everything. So the tires, even the engine oil is original. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Probably shouldn't say that. And looking at our shifting pressures, we went from 12 to 60 to 16 to 65. I guess it did go up a little bit there. And then 39 to 62 actually went down 38 to 59 after we modified it. So long and short of it, it did do quite a bit of changes, but it really did it on the holding pressures, the, the line pressure after the shift is complete and less so on the shifting pressures while the shift is occurring. So to summarize this XYZ table is altering these values who can raise and lower these pressures. Uh, it can raise and lower the clutch holding pressures or the torque holding pressures, the ultimate maximum pressure, but it doesn't seem to change the actual clutch shifting pressures that much. So it's not going to necessarily change the feel of the shift, but it will hold the clutch on tighter once the shift is complete. So it might be a good modification to do, maybe in conjunction with other things, if you've increased the power output of your engine uh, to basically make sure that this clutch doesn't slip. Now the next modification I did was I increased the adaptive oncoming pressures by 36. So what is the adaptive oncoming pressure? And this is all my opinion. If you read their description, it says shift adapt pressure, preset pressure, one, two oncoming, pressure preset for the one, two shift. And they give you a few different values. So you're like, well, what do these values represent? Is if you remember when we looked at the shift phases in part one and then even the observations and pretty much all these videos, there's different phases to the shift. We'll see the fill phase and the torque phase. That usually takes up about roughly a third of the shift. And then there's the inertia phase, which pretty much almost completes the shift. And then at the end, there's this torque holding, which is when the pressure just goes up to whatever the clutch pressure is, the maximum clutch pressure. Now this is just my theory. I don't know if it's true or not, so take it with a grain of salt. Maybe you guys can comment and tell me if you see something, know anything different, but this is the way I interpret it, is this first, what they call pressure zero, is going to be the fill pressure. So when we look at the pressure curve, the very first part of the, of the clutch application pressure change there is going to be the fill phase, and it's a relatively low pressure. And then the next phase, is going to be what the, and this is my opinion, uh, what the pressure is going to end up at on the inertia. So it's either going to end up as low as 29 PSI or, 20, or 30 PSI in this example, and, and as high as roughly 60 PSI. And I'm assuming that one would be like a very low throttle, low torque output, and two might be wide open throttle or highest torque output. So when we look at that slope where it's climbing up, it could go as low as from 11 to 29, or it can go as high as 11 to 60. That's my theory, and you can look at that for all the different shifts. Is it true? Well, I don't know. Um, you know, here are the examples I got. Now, this is 40% throttle, so we wouldn't expect this number to be the lowest because I'm still got quite a bit of torque coming out of here. So uh, changing that value took it, so I got 11 as my fill, I started at 19 roughly, and I, like I said, it's hard to tell. I don't know if the inertia phase started here or if it's starting right here, but um, I'm just identifying some of these pressures. So if you've got a different opinion, you can see at least what that pressure is. But 11, and then it went as high as 44 before it jumped up to the full clutch pressure. And after the modification, it went to this. It stayed at 11, and then it climbed up to 51, and then went to full pressure. 
That was at 40% throttle. At wide open throttle, we started at 11, and it climbed up to 60. I'm not really including that little spike there, so it's going from 11 to 60. And then after the modification, it went from 10 to 63. So it really didn't climb that much. It did climb a bit with the 40% throttle, but quite honestly, that could just be a variation of my foot. Maybe I didn't hold it exactly at, at um, uh, 40%. So that's 11, roughly 30, and roughly 60. So looking at my baseline, I did end up getting to you know 44, so that's somewhere between 30 and 60. And I actually did end up getting to 60. So it, it went from 11 to 60 at wide open throttle, which kind of matches what I was thinking, 11 to 60. So maybe I'm right, I don't know. It's a guess, because like I said, there's no information and um, it's kind of misleading sometimes. And then I basically added 30% to these, but I didn't get a 30% outcome. On this one, I only went up 3% or uh, three PSI. On this one, I don't know percentage-wise that went up, but I um, mean, it would probably be, it's less than 10%. So even though I raised those values 30%, didn't really see the net outcome. Now, is it because it adapted? No, I don't think so, because the very first shift that would have happened after the modification should have been really high pressure, and, uh, and then it didn't have a chance to adapt and those weren't higher um, substanti substantially. If you view the PowerPoint, uh, if you download the PDF of the PowerPoint and you go to them, I have the first and last, where the first meaning, the first shift after the modification, uh, then what I call last would be after it had a chance to adapt. Now this is the two, three shift. So those presets would be 34, 44, and 57, roughly. And what was I actually getting? Well, I, my fill pressures were about 38. So they are, uh, you know, they're not 34, so I don't know. Um, we're getting higher fill pressures than that. And then we're transitioning under 40% throttle, we went as high as 41, which is lower than their 44. And after the modification, it went as high as 47, so it did increase. Under wide open throttle, it went up to 62, which was higher than the number two. And it went as high as 50, actually it dropped from the baseline, it didn't go as high. So. I don't know, my theory is not looking too good right now. But otherwise, I really don't know what these numbers mean because when you start looking at like, okay, what's 74 PSI? It would be around here somewhere. Um, so it's, it's close. I don't know if that counts. And here's the 3.4. I don't have a wide open throttle example for the 3.4 because I wasn't able to do a wide open throttle 3.4 shift without going like 120 some miles an hour. Didn't want to blow up these tires. So these are the preset values and it says, uh, roughly 30, what is that, 38, 56, and 75. And we were at about 38. So this does kind of go and coincide with that being the fill pressure. And there's, you know, maximum of 52. Well, I don't know. We are probably should be a little higher than that. After the modification, it went up, really didn't change at all. It just went up a PSI. So anyway, I don't know if I'm on target with this, with the 0, 1, and 2. But I do believe, it seems pretty consistent, that zero is, in fact, the fill pressure. I just don't know if these other two numbers, where they really fall in line and represent on this graph. So to kind of continue on with that, the off-going pressures, that's going to be dealing with the releasing clutch. So along those same lines, we're going to release a clutch in different stages. Just like when we apply a clutch, we've got the fill, torque, inertia, and then holding. We're going to have to have stages for the releasing clutch because on these synchronous transmissions, you have to control the releasing clutch. It's just as important as controlling the apply clutch because I can't let a releasing clutch just drain off immediately because for a period of time, I'm not going to have any clutch applied. And if I didn't have any clutch applied, my engine would flare. And I can't hang that pressure on too long because if I got two clutches applied or trying to operate in two gear ratios at once, it'll bind the transmission up. So. That's the reason why when we look at these pressure curves, there's a systematic approach to releasing the pressure and applying the pressure so that way they get a precise, perfect shift. It's also why these transmissions sometimes have quirky shifts here and there is because it's pretty easy for a tie up to occur or for a, a flare to occur, uh, occur. So these presets, just like we were talking about on the oncoming clutches, this would have to do with the different stages of which the pressures are gonna drop off on the releasing clutch. Now they have a one-two off-going, which is interesting to me because they really don't have an off-going clutch for the one-two. 
Uh, the low reverse clutch applies in this transmission and they help you kind of launch from a stop and then they release that clutch before the one two clutch actually applies because they have a one-way sprag assembly in there holding that carrier and they don't need a clutch to hold it. So they don't, they actually do release that clutch but it's not a, a, a releasing clutch that you would ever feel and they release it before the shift. So maybe they just have that information there because they do release the clutch in a systematic fashion. It's just, um, we would never feel it. And this is the clutch releasing. So this is the 2.6 clutch releasing. So the 2.6 is in gold. We can see it drops to this point and it'll, and the, this is the kind of neat thing with the pressure transducers. You can see things that are happening in milliseconds that you wouldn't be able to see with a gauge if I had mechanical gauges hooked up. So initially that pressure dropped to 56 and then rebuilt up to 76. And then you can see there's this controlled release and it kind of levels out here at 38. So I'd almost call this like, you know, our, our fill phase on our applying clutches right here. And then this is kind of what the releasing clutch is doing while the applying clutch is filling. And then this phase right there is when they're releasing the clutch. And that actually is the torque phase. And that is when most of that shift occurs. And in reality, that would be the inertia, but I've been kind of combining this all into one. And then it kind of hovers out here at this pressure here until that shift is complete. So I've really broken this down. And I don't know if this is a legit breakdown in the different phases, but this is what I'm going with. The very initial phase where they're going to drop you down to a certain pressure where they're going to control the release of the clutch, uh, what I call phase two here, and then phase three. And then this one here is just kind of uh, a drain back, if you will. The clutch is fully released at this point in stage four. So this is like a prep phase. And then these two and three are going to control the rate of the clutch release so that the ratio is controlled properly. And then four is more of a, a, a kind of a drain back or relief phase where they empty out that clutch assembly. I don't know. My opinion, I haven't seen anywhere published where they've described the different phases of an off-going clutch, but this is pretty consistent amongst all the different shifts. I can see these four unique sections in each one of these clutches as it releases. How that relates to the different three presets that they've got, well, it's not really matched perfectly, but what I'm gonna have to assume is that like here, I'm just gonna ignore the one, two off going because once again, we can't, I, I don't have that tapped for pressures because we'll never feel that shift anyway. But looking at the two, three off going, kind of in an opposite fashion, like the first step of drain back might be to 60 and then to 43 and then 19. And what were we actually getting? Well, this is the baseline at wide open throttle and at 40%. It went from, you know, this pressure 160 PSI down to 48 or 53 at wide open throttle. Then it dropped down to 29 or 24 at wide open throttle. And then it hovered at seven at that last phase four, if you will. And then our three, four shift, we dropped down to 53, and then 30, and then 19. Pretty consistent. This one was a, was a little higher on the wide open throttle than at 40%. So I don't know, on this 4.5, it really didn't match any of those numbers over there. But I guess the big question was, is if you change these values, are we actually raising and lowering these points? And the answer is yes. So just basically going off of um, the two shifts that we can really account for here, which is the two, three, and the three, four. Baseline, you can see this is what I got baseline for uh, 40%, this 165, 48, 24, and then wide open throttle is 162, and my baseline example, 53, 29. Now, modified it by um, adding 30% to the offgoing table, and you can see my 40% throttle went from having the first step at 48 to the first step at 76. So that was a big jump. And then my uh, wide open throttle went from the first step there being 53 to 85. So it in fact did do a pretty substantial change. When I raised these values 30%, you can see these are the numbers that I ended up with here. It actually was a pretty substantial change. Now my three, four, uh, at 40% baseline went from 136 to 53 and then a wide open went from 165 to 62. Looking at the modified, I didn't have the wide open throttle to, as an example on this, but I went from 129 to 63. So I did do a pretty, pretty substantial climb 
on my off going clutch. So adding pressure to these values right here will either uh, raise or reduce, depending on which direction you're going with the, the values as you change them, the off going clutch. So if you have a tie up or a bind, you could possibly change these numbers and maybe get that off going clutch to release a little bit quicker. Or maybe if you've got a flare, you can try to get that off going clutch to hang on for a little longer. So that's how I interpret these results. So to summarize what we looked at here today, changing those XYZ tables, those pattern tables, will increase the clutch holding force, but it doesn't seem to affect the actual shifting pressure so much. The adaptive oncoming, when I changed those values, for some reason it didn't seem to change the actual pressures that much, but the adaptive offgoing, it definitely changed those values, especially during the phases two and three that I kind of identified on the slides. It altered those either by raising them or lowering them, depending on which direction you would go when you modify it. So hopefully you got something out of this video. Like I said, if you go through the different slides after this, if you download the presentation, it will include all the nitty gritty details, individual comparison slides, more specific pressures and so forth. I just go through in these videos and I summarize it so that way you don't have to listen to um, an hour video. It could be pretty torturous. As I mentioned in the other videos, there's a whole slew of videos for the 6L80 on the channel. So if you want to learn how to overhaul it or learn how it works internally, that's the place to go. And of course, I want to thank Nick Middlebrun for all of his help. He was invaluable in this process. Anyway, stay tuned for the next video, which is going to be part five, where we're going to go through torque adder, transition time, and torque factor. See you soon.